Hey students, in this video we are going to dimension this chamfered block that we made way back at the beginning of our advanced modeling unit. And we are going to put two different style dimensions on two different drawings. So let's go ahead and change our workspace to drawing from design. Uh, over on this side of our screen, when the create drawing box opens up, make sure you get the Spartan manufacturing template picked. And then we're going to go ahead and click on OK. And we're going to wait patiently for Fusion to do its thing. There we go. Now, we want to place this view that you can see on my screen as your front view. So if you look at it and it doesn't make an L shape, again, you may have to toggle through some different choices. Uh, maybe this view would be the best front view for you. Okay, Not for me, because uh, again, we want to see that L that shows the best contour, uh, which is one of the requirements in picking a good front view for an isometric uh, I'm sorry, orthographic drawing. Uh, so again, there's my L shape. That looks good. It does look pretty tiny though for putting some dimensions on. So I'm gonna try a scale of one, uh, which is looking pretty good. So I'm gonna go ahead and place my base view. Uh, and again, when we're placing that base view, we wanna make sure that we don't have it touching the border lines. We wanna hold it up and to the right, just a little bit from the, uh, the left-hand border line in our title block to give us plenty of room for dimensions. So we're going to go ahead and click OK, and then we're going to use the projected views button to create three additional views. We'll create our top view. We'll create our right side view, and then we'll drag the cursor up here to the upper right hand corner and make our isometric view. And now this wants to keep making views, so I need to click Escape. Uh, and then I'm going to double click on this view, and I'm going to click on Shaded. Okay, and we'll also change the size slightly just to make it stand out. And right, let's put a scale of 1.5 here. I think we can live with that. Okay, now it does go across the border line, so I want to remove it. I want to stay coloring inside of the lines. And then I might take my right side view and just slide it over a little bit. Okay, I like the way this looks. Okay, you can see up here it says untitled. So I'm going to go ahead and save this now uh, before we start adding dimensions. Okay, it's going to go into my practice CAD file where we've been saving all our other practice stuff. And we can call this our chamfered drawing. And we'll go ahead and say save. Right, now we're going to do a baseline dimension for this. So what baseline is, is it picks one dimension spot and it keeps pulling all your other dimensions off of there. Uh, here is oh, here is this little cupboard I was designing for a friend. Uh, and I did some practice with the baseline tool. So you can see here's uh, on this side, rather, here is my baseline. And from the bottom, the baseline, it's six inches up to there. It's 30 to the next. It's 34 to the next. Uh, these numbers on the bottom are chain dimensions. We'll get to that in just a minute. Okay. So let's go ahead and do our baseline. We got to start off with one small dimension first. So this is a little backwards. I'm going to do the height. Uh, of this object, but I'm not going to dimension the overall first. Uh, I'm just going to pick a small uh, section, actually the smallest section, and I'm going to dimension that first. Okay. Then I'll come back to dimension. I'll go to baseline dimension, and I'm going to pick this as my baseline, so this bottom line. All right, now I'm going to go up to the next corner. That'll be my next feature. Uh, I'll go to the next corner of the chamfer. That'll be my next feature. And then finally, the top. Uh, is going to be my last feature. Okay, now this gives me the option of pulling out more baselines here. When you want to free yourself from this tool, uh, you're going to hit enter instead of escape. It took me a long time to figure that out. I, I might make that mistake in this video. Hopefully not, but I might. Okay, so now that we've done the baseline going up, we'll do the baseline going left to right. Again, I'm going to pick the smallest uh, section to dimension first. And I'll go up. You can kind of see when I drag my cursor up, it wants to snap into location there. That's where I want to put that first dimension. And then we'll go to our drop down and we're going to go to baseline dimension. Okay, we'll click the far left hand side. And then just like we did the baseline left to right, I'm sorry, the up and down dimensions, we're going to baseline left to right here. All right, and then I'm going to hit enter, not escape, and I'll free myself from that tool. Okay, so I did that for the length and the height of this object. It's a uniform depth, so I don't need the baseline here. I can just go to my dimension tool, uh, drag out a dimension. I'm going to make that overall dimension even with this overall dimension on the bottom uh, and lock it into place. Okay, now we're going to go back and change uh, two things here. 
Uh, I've got dimensions going to different decimal places. I've got somewhere I think it rounded. So we're going to go into document settings. Uh, and then we're going to come down to where it says dimension unit inches. And we're going to go do some further changes. So I click the pencil and paper that opens up this whole window here. Uh, and we are going to come down here to units. And we're going to set our unit precision at three. And then we're going to say OK. And you can see that extends some of these numbers. It makes them a little bit bigger. Um, now, a couple of these are overlapping, so I'm just going to click on the little blue dot in the middle. I might drag this one up. I might click on this blue dot and drag it down uh, so I can better see those numbers in there. Okay, I notice on some of these in Fusion, it's not giving us three decimal places. I'm sure there's a way to change that. Uh, I'll explore that a little bit more and report back to you in a future video. All right, so the last thing I need to dimension on here is I don't know what the radius of this fillet is. So I'm going to zoom in on it. And I'm just going to use the dimension tool to highlight the curve part. I don't want to snap to either of these two endpoints. I want to highlight the curve part. Uh, and again, sometimes it's easier if you zoom in, you get a little more mouse to get that curve part on. And then I'm going to drag my cursor up and try and go like at a 45 through these dimension lines. So I, I want to do my best not to intersect a bunch of lines. We'll just cross over uh, where some of these lines are already crossing. All right. And we're done with that one. So I'm going to zoom oops, out, not in. Oh, golly. See if we can fix this. I'm zoomed in way too far. Oh, that's not going to do it. All right. Well, I'm going to go and I'm going to make a new page by clicking on the plus button. All right. And now I think I can snap back here and I shouldn't be zoomed in too far. I think sheet one. I don't know if you can hear it, but the fan is running super loud on my computer. It's starting to act kind of glitchy. I'm not sure if I did that by zooming in or if it didn't like it. So I'm going to try again at the end to show you what the overall looked like here. Uh, but we're going to go to sheet two. We have this, this image down here even looks funny. Things are getting weird here. Hopefully my computer doesn't crash. And we're going to go through and we're going to use the chain dimension this time. So I'm going to go to base view. All right, here is my front view. And just like in that last video, I need to change the scale. We're going to go one to one. I'll place my base view, then I'll click OK. And now we're going to project a couple additional views off of here. And so there's my left or my right and my top side. There's my isometric. And just like in the last video, uh, we're going to switch this one up, try and make it stand out from the rest of the drawing. And then we're going to make sure it fits inside the border lines. All right. So this one, we're going to use our chain dimension on. And you can see the difference between baseline, which I did for the heights on this one, and chain. Uh, in chain dimensioning, we just chain one feature to the feature next to it. So if I want to know how far over it is to this corner of this particular gray panel, uh, I've got to do a bunch of math. I've got to add 4 plus 12 plus 4 plus 12 plus 4, uh, which would be 24 plus another 12, 36 inches to this side. All right, so depending on what you're building or how you want it built, there might be advantages to one of these over the other. Uh, again, we'll talk about tolerancing in a future lesson, uh, and some of those advantages I think will make sense to you then. Uh, for today, we just want to know that there's a difference. We want to be able to identify them, and we want to be able to put those dimensions on here. All right, so for the chain dimension, it's a little bit different because I can just come in here to chain dimension. And it should, yeah, it's not letting me. I got to put a base dimension for the chain as well. So we're going to dimension from here to this corner. And go up till it locks in place. And then we can go into the chain dimension tool. Right, we're going to select this as our base dimension. We'll select this corner as the next point we want to measure to. We'll select this corner as the point we want to measure to. And we never want to chain all the way across an object. So at this point, I'm going to hit enter. Right? And then I'm going to grab my regular dimension tool. And I'm going to finish off my chain dimension by dimensioning the overall height of this object. 
right? And then since I got my dimension tool active, I'm gonna go ahead and dimension the smallest feature here for the length. And then I'm gonna go down to the chain dimension tool. I'm gonna pick this dimension as my base. Uh, and then I'm gonna go through, I'll pick that as my next point. That is my next point. Now I don't wanna go here cause this would lock everything in place. So I'm gonna hit enter. Right. And if you can see here, these dimensions are a little messy. We'll clean those up in just a minute. Uh, but first, I want to give the overall dimension of this object's length. And I'm going to drag this up a little higher because uh, I think I'm going to need some room in here. All right. So then if I come to uh, this dimension and ooh, let's see if we can get it to pick. There we go. If I double click on it, uh, I can move this dimension down. Uh, then I can come to 0.375. If I go in the middle, I can move that dimension up. Uh, then I'm going to click on 0.5. Again, I got to kind of pick the grip here that's in the middle. Uh, and I can move this dimension. Right, down below. So now I kind of got them ordered here. So if we were looking, we'd see this is a half inch uh, from this extension line to this extension line is 375. That's 3 eighths of an inch. From here to here is 625. That's 5 eighths of an inch. Uh, so we can see how those dimensions are chained together there. All right. Uh, and then just like on our last one, I'm going to struggle with the zoom button just like on our last one. And then uh, we can dimension this object's overall depth uh, just using the regular dimension tool. So from corner to corner is 1.5. And the radius of this fillet down here shouldn't have changed from the last one. It should still be uh, an eighth inch uh, radius on that corner. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and hit save. And we have completed it. We have dimensioned ooh, these two drawings using our chain and our baseline tool. All right. Baseline one still not showing up. All right. But there's the chain one. So go ahead and move on to the next video after you've shown this to your instructor to get some feedback on it.